Did you know that the average American spends over $500 a year on snacks? It might seem crazy, but these sweet and salty snacks make up a huge portion of the e-commerce market. Hey, I'm Blake, and in this video, we're gonna show you how to find undervalued snacks at Dollar Trees, sell them online in a process called retail arbitrage, and then later on in the video, expand beyond that to help you create your own snack empire. The first step is going to a Dollar Tree. Now, it's pretty hard to make a full-time income flipping Dollar Tree stuff. You can do it, but it's tough. What I love about the Dollar Tree is how easy it is to find these items we can flip online, learn the basics, and make some cash along the way. The first item is a great replenishable, maybe even one of the best. It's Haribo gummies in the four ounce package. Now these Haribo gummies are going to melt in the summer. So between May 1st and September 1st, you cannot FBA these. And unless you have an ice pack, I would not recommend shipping them through the post office. You're gonna have to wait until the fall or the spring. Uh, the comps on these are really good. You're seeing these sell for between four to seven dollars, sometimes more, depending on the flavor. You're gonna have to scan or look up each one. Oftentimes the barcodes don't match the Amazon listing or the eBay listing, but the keywords like Haribo Happy Cola, Haribo Star Mix, Haribo Frogs, Haribo Happy Cherries, this is going to be consistent across all the English text packaging. There is other language packaging, German packaging. Those do go for a bit more. You have to import them. And later on in the video, I'll show you how to do that. And hey, one more thing. If you're liking the video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I love making content just like this. Another great replenishable is Jelly Belly Sours. This follows the same rules we've established for other niche Dollar Tree retail arbitrage flips where it's a branded product and even better than that it's a iteration of a branded product it's its own sub niche within the niche that being the sours people love these they're not going to melt in the summer and you can go on ebay right now and see some really good comps one of the important things to know about selling jelly bellies is they have a lot of different upc codes on the various sizes of packaging and that might make amazon a difficult place to sell these but eBay, based on keyword listings, should still be fine for you to flip. I recommend lotting them up in sizes of four or six. The next thing I'm showing you, I bought to sell on Amazon using FBA. You're probably saying, Blake, I am not ungated in groceries, but don't worry. Later on in the video, I'm gonna share with you a very easy to work with wholesaler who will sell you grocery items that are invoiced to help get you ungated on Amazon. These I'm only making about a buck 92, but off of my $1 initial investment, it'll be about a nickel to send these to Amazon. That's great ROI. And when you're wholesaling stuff, especially a diverse array of wholesale items, ROI matters quite a bit. I also found these very cherry gumballs Lower profit, but still positive ROI. We've been sticking to candy, but there's also some wheat-based, we can call them snacks. These are Hello Panda strawberry treats. There are Hello Panda chocolate treats, and there are Yan Yan sticks. Uh, they're like little biscotti type cookies that you dip into a strawberry creamy dipping uh, paste, you might call it. They're very popular. I'm gonna sell these in a bundle, and I'm gonna say, Asian candy bundle. I have experience doing this. I know people like those keywords. And with the $1 per item acquisition cost, I should easily be able to double or triple my money. And speaking of great keywords, this Lenny and Larry complete cookie has some great keywords. Vegan, kosher, plant-based, protein cookie. It's not gluten-free. That would have been like the ultimate co compilation of keywords but it's still gonna be selling. Uh, now on these, you're seeing them go for about two or three bucks plus shipping on eBay. You can offer free shipping, but that makes the per cookie cost seem way high. Or as if you charge shipping additionally, the buyer understands like, oh, I'm buying these and I'm paying for shipping. And in my experience, Generally, that leads to less angry buyers. And if you're wondering, yes, that is the exception to the rule. Generally, I offer free shipping. Okay, so we got our stuff right there. Good Dollar Tree candy haul. Now we're gonna go back to my warehouse. I'll show you how I'm gonna sell this, and then we'll explain how to go beyond 
Dollar Tree retail arbitrage into your own wholesale or private label business. Okay, so I've got it all laid out here. We spent, you can see that, 15 bucks. Yeah, uh, there's no tax on candy in Michigan. And how are we gonna sell this stuff? Uh, and more importantly, how do we grow beyond Dollar Tree retail arbitrage? Well, I'm gonna tell you all of that, so pay attention. This stuff's gonna be FBA'd. You put a label right there, you send it to Amazon. We're gonna charge $8.95 probably, and that's a bit higher than the lowest merchant fulfilled price, but because there's no other FBA listings, we have a little bit of leverage to scooch in there and uh, take the buy box. These will be on eBay. I'm gonna sell them in a four pack. Uh, I brought this box out to show you what I ship my delicate small stuff in. It's a six by six by six box from Supply Hut. I bought like 500 of them a couple of years ago. I use them for small things like uh, out of box Funko Pops, you know, candy in this case, uh, just small things that can't be in a bag. These are gonna go as an Asian snack or candy sampler. Uh, I looked up the individual like keywords and barcodes, not a lot of traction, but I know from personal experience, people love buying Asian candy, especially in America. We just love it there. These are gonna go in a bag, so they're not meltable. The reason I stayed away from the gummy bears, if, I don't know if I'm gonna mention it or not in the, in the voiceover, so I'll say it again. Pretty much most candies that are meltable, so chocolate, gummies, just those two I guess I can think of right now, are gonna melt once it hits about 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's like the ambient temperature in your box. So from like May 1st until September 1st, I do not ship candy that melts. Uh, these, I guess you could say there's chocolate chips in there. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna say, yeah, I think it's gonna be okay. But I would not like by any means sell those Haribo, even though they were profitable. That being said, if you're trying to find a good point to enter the market, early September, there are gonna be a lot of people who haven't yet sent in their meltable food products. You can send them in last week of August or early September, assuming you're in a state where it's not you know, a million degrees like in California right now, and you can take advantage of that lowered competition. It's not gonna work all year round, but it's a good little tip that I think will help you make some money. Okay, so we're gonna Sell these in a lot of four, probably make about four or five bucks profit. Sell these in a lot of three, make about three or four bucks profit. A lot of four, four or five bucks profit. And individually, we should get a buck or two profit depending on what the buy box actually settles at. They could sell for $9.95, they could sell for $7.95, but as long as we're in that range, they're still gonna be profitable. I have four here, I could buy more. But how do you buy more if you don't want to go to the Dollar Tree every single day? Well, that's the next part of the video. We're going to go back to my house and I'm going to explain to you how to do private label and wholesale for items like this. If you saw this video so far and you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel, giving it a big thumbs up and commenting below with what your plans are with this info. There's a lot of jackasses out there, a lot of gurus, a lot of con artists who want to take your hopes and dreams and your money. I'm not about that. I'm about providing valuable information to you for free. And if you like that, let me know. Show me your support. It is extremely appreciated. Okay, enough of the pitch, right? Let's talk about the meat of this video, the wholesale and the private label options to expand upon Dollar Tree retail arbitrage. Let's go over wholesale first because I think it might be the easiest out of our litany of options we're gonna have over the next few minutes. There's just three, but it's the easiest to do this one. I recommend using a company like, doesn't have to be them, but like them, katytexaswholesale.com. They are an e-commerce oriented distributor who will give you invoiced orders of hard to find stuff, of Norse spice packets, of Pokemon cards even. They specialize in that. They cost a bit more than like what Walmart buys their stuff for, but we're not Walmart. We are taking this ladder up. And the first step of the ladder is probably Dollar Tree. The second step is a distributor who will work with us like this. You don't have to have an EIN or an LLC. I recommend you have those, but if you're just getting started and you're testing the waters, you don't have to have them. And that's why I think they're a great place for beginners 
or people looking to test the waters in new niches. They did not sponsor the video. I do have an affiliate link. It's WBK10. You get 10% off your purchase, but by no way are they being like, hey, Blake, psst, say we're cool, say we're good. Uh, that's not the kind of stuff I do here. Nothing wrong with video sponsors. I'm just not gonna go out of my way to lie to you. And just because I'm name dropping, if you wanna get an easy LLC or EIN or whatever you need, Basically, you're gonna have two ways to do this. One, go to LegalZoom. Two, go to your state's Secretary of State website. Uh, do some basic Googling, and in an afternoon, you should be all taken care of. So once you have that info, once you understand your niches, what's the next step? In my opinion, I would say it's a larger distributor or importer like Malincho.com. I bought from them, very easy to work with, they market themselves as a Bulgarian importer, but they're gonna import stuff from all of Europe. You wanna do some German text Haribo candies? Sure, why not? They'll put them in a container. You wanna import Russian nesting dolls? I bet they could find those too. Companies like Malincho function in two main ways. Firstly, they have their catalog you can order from. Secondly, they will get the stuff you want. If it can be sold in America, so like no weird like Polish gallons of pigeon blood, but like Haribo gummies from Germany, they can get those for you. I've bought them from them and you can sell them in America. Now these made to order import stuff, they do take quite a bit longer because they have to reserve space on their next container for you. But again, if you are a business person, you're not thinking tomorrow, you're thinking nine months, you're thinking 24 months down the line and how you can capitalize with the information you have now in the future. Finally, what I think is like the last step and the most expensive step and the most time consuming step above like ordering from a small specialty distributor or an importer is gonna be private label. It's not like rocket science, like, oh geez, how do I make sure candy tastes good? It always tastes good. It always is good. That's why I have so many cavities. It's delicious, but difficult in a way of like, you have to make sure that the packaging is correct, both like of the candy and the box it gets to you in. You're gonna have to facilitate uh, the logistics of it getting to you. And if the packaging has to go from a printer to the private labeler, it's a bit more difficult. Again, I've done this, it's not impossible, but it costs more money and takes more time. I'm not sure what the startup cost is for like circus peanut pegboard candy, but like for example, uh, a few years ago, I was considering private labeling chocolate bars and for my own molded chocolate bar of like crap milk chocolate, the very lowest I could do was put in $25,000. And I was like, no, thank you. A company I think is great for this is Taylor's in the Chicago land area. Now I'm biased because they're in Chicago, I'm in Michigan, and I will support Midwestern companies until the day I die, uh, but they are reliable, they're a big name, and as long as you're not like in California where freight would be prohibitively expensive, uh, they're gonna be a fine place to either do wholesale stuff because they wholesale their candy, or private label stuff because they do that as well. Uh, talk to a rep, it's literally their job to sell you on this idea. Just make sure you have all the info. And once you do, you could have, you know, Blake's bodacious banana bombs in bags of two ounces. You could have your own off-brand warhead. I don't know. The sky is the limit. You are only held back by your imagination, I guess, and your money. But as we've seen before, it's not hard to make money. If you're patient, if you're consistent, you can work your way up from Dollar Tree retail arbitrage to specialty distributors, to importers, to finally your own brand of delectable treats. And at that point, you've made it. Thanks for watching the video. Appreciate all your support. And I'll see you guys next week.